The new 2012 census migration data uh, shows that uh, for the first time in a while, the young adult population, people 25 to 29, um, when you want to call them millennials, who've been stuck at home now during this whole recession period, are really starting to have a noticeable uptick in their long distance migration moving between states. It's the biggest gain in a migration rate for young people in about 15 years. That doesn't mean it's a high migration rate because it's really been down in the doldrums for the last few years. But I see them as being, you know, the duck eyes of the uh, rest of the, the pattern. They're leading indicators of migration that's going to be coming for the broader population. And, and I say that because these young people uh, don't have the baggage that older people do. They, they don't already have a home that's underwater or foreclosed upon, other kinds of financial issues that they have to deal with. They're living in their parents' basements or they're living with roommates. And so when they start moving, that means, you know, something's going on. And when we look at the metropolitan areas that are attracting these young people, they tend to be places that are knowledge-based, have high-tech stuff going on, and are kind of cool. Okay? And so Washington, D.C., Houston, Denver, Portland, Oregon, Austin, Texas uh, are the gains, the places that are having the biggest gains in these young people uh, over the last period that we have data for, the most recent data that we have. Well, migration is of various sorts and of various motivations. People who, who move longer distances tend to move for employment-related reasons. Unless, of course, they're senior citizens, they move to retire. But for most of the people in the labor force, they move long distances because they know that jobs in different parts of the country may open up in their fields, whatever their you know, specialty is or whatever they want to do, and they're willing to move to those jobs. Short distance migration tends to be moving to buy a new house within the same area. You don't usually change jobs when you move in a short distance within the same county or within you know, the same community. Uh, and the kinds of uh, factors and determinants of short distance migration are more housing related. So what we see with these new data for 2012 is a continuing uh, really low rate of migration within counties. So that tells us that whatever uptick there is in the housing market has not yet translated to upticks in, in short distance migration rates. Even for young people, that's still relatively low. So, uh, so what we really see are kind of two kinds of migration going in different directions. The long distance migration showing a little bit of an uptick with maybe the improvement in the employment situation. The short distance migration staying low, suggesting that the housing market hasn't gotten good enough to get people to move from house to house or place to place. And when we look at the new numbers for 2012, for all kinds of movement, 12% of Americans move anywhere. Uh, and that's a little bit higher than the 11.6% in 2011. But that 2011 rate was the lowest since the end of World War II. So we're moving upward in migration, largely being driven by young people moving across state lines.